worst game, but it's the greatest game story ever told. I heard that Atari recalled all of the cartridges and buried them somewhere in the middle of the desert because the game was so bad. I mean, when gamers found out E.T. was buried in that landfill, it became forever buried in our conscious minds. I have to save the fans. We're gonna find that landfill and prove that there's nothing under there. Maybe then everybody can forget about this game. He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard. He's the angry video game nerd. And he's finally got his own movie. Oh, been looking forward to this one pretty much since the day it was announced. And finally, it's here, and, you know, I really, really like this one. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. It's got quite a few flaws, and it's very obviously low budget. But it does have a lot of charm to it, and I found it incredibly entertaining. Uh, the story behind this one is uh, a video game company known as Cockburn Industries. Uh, yes, really. <laughs> Uh, has noticed that crappy video games have increased in popularity very much so in recent years, largely thanks to the reviews of the Angry Video Game Nerd and people enjoying these crappy games ironically. And so their plan is to release their own sequel to one of the worst games ever made, E.T. Originally released on the Atari 2600. And I remember playing that game way back in the day, and yes, it is pretty bad. <laughs> And they're hoping that they'll release the game and the nerd will review it and that will boost its popularity and sales will go through the roof. And the nerd, of course, is reluctant to do this at first, as he's even been reluctant to review E.T. itself. But after a rather strange nightmare, he gets an idea to go to Alamogordo, New Mexico and attempt to debunk the myth that several thousand copies of E.T., several unsold copies, were dumped in a landfill somewhere in the desert. And along the way, he and his sidekick Cooper and Cockburn employee Mandy, who was also along for the ride, get involved in this massive conspiracy involving the military and aliens and a giant mythical super being who can destroy all of existence as we know it. Like you do. Yeah, this movie gets weird at times. <laughs> Very weird. It is nothing if not creative. I will definitely give it that. Wow, this... To, to live in James's head for one day, I... Oh, I don't know if I could cope with that. Uh, but yeah, the, the movie stars, of course, James Rolfe himself as the angry video game nerd. It was written and directed by him and his uh, longtime friend Kevin Finn. Uh, also... Uh, stars Jeremy Suarez as his sidekick Cooper, who is a fellow video game reviewer, and uh, Sarah Glendening as Mandy, the Cockburn employee, and the voice of Robbie Rist as uh, the alien that the nerd eventually encounters in this movie. And Robbie Rist, you might remember, I, I may have pointed him out in my Sharknado review, he was the bus driver who eventually got killed when part of the Hollywood sign fell on him shortly after saying, my mom always told me Hollywood would kill me. Wah, wah, wah. You remember. That guy. And also our villains are Stephen Mandel as General Dark Onward, which is an awesome name, and his second-in-command, Sergeant McButter, which is also a very silly name, played by Helena Barrett. Uh, and also many, many cameos throughout this movie from various internet celebrities that you might recognize, like Doug Walker, of course, as his obligatory cameo. Uh, it was a bit shorter than I expected, but still pretty funny. Uh, Pat the NES Punk is in there. Uh, Andre the Black Nerd is also in the movie. Uh, a few other people whose faces I recognize, but I couldn't quite remember their names because I haven't seen enough of their work to really know who they are. Um, I'm sure other people will recognize him, though. Uh, Howard Scott Warshaw himself, the guy who programmed the original E.T. game, he makes a cameo in there, which is awesome. Uh, and Lloyd freaking Kaufman, of all people. He's got a cameo in here. That guy is everywhere. First Guardians of the Galaxy and now this. Dude is all over the place. I don't know where that guy's gonna turn up next. But, yeah, he, he's like... He's becoming the new Stan Lee, almost, in a way. Uh, but yeah, so 
Um, the acting overall was actually pretty decent. Um, re really, no one was giving a bad performance unless it was intentional. Um, like, uh, uh, Mendel in particular is hilariously over the top as General Dark onward, but I, I get the feeling that was done on purpose. He's supposed to be over the top because he is very much a B-movie villain, and this is very much a B-movie. Uh, both in terms of, you know, storytelling and also in terms of the budgets. It's, a, uh, I mean, it, it was intended to be a B-movie, and it looks so very cheap at times. Uh, laughably so. Um, al although I'm pretty sure that's done on purpose, again. But part of it is just budgetary constraints, because this movie was made for a pretty small amount of money. I don't remember the exact amount, but it... It wasn't much, whatever they could collect on their little Indiegogo campaign. Uh, so, some of the effects actually do look pretty decent, considering the low budget this movie had. Others are just so bad that you, all, you, you know they were done on purpose. There's a point where a freaking missile silo, the top hatch that opens up to reveal the missile, is simulated with, I shit you not, with a vegetable steamer. It's a goddamn vegetable steamer, and it's so obviously a vegetable steamer, they're not even trying to hide it. It's just... It, it's so... looks so bad, but at the same time, it's kind of brilliant, because... I... I mean, who would ever think to do that? Honestly, it's just... Oh my god, I... It, I just... I laughed so hard at that once I realized what it was. Oh man. It's... And yeah, it, it's very, very cheap, but, you know... In a way, the cheapness is part of its charm. It's, it, it just adds to the enjoyment, at least for me it did. The humor in this movie is pretty solid. Uh, if, you've, if you are familiar with the angry video game nerd at all, then you know his style of humor, and it's all over this movie. This movie is very, very much him, through and through. Uh, a few callbacks to some AVGN episodes as well, uh, including something you might recognize from uh, the Back to the Future episode in particular. Uh, which leads to a very funny moment. Uh, I also like how they uh, censored all of the brand names that they weren't allowed to use. Some of them are very, very clever. The story, for the most part, is actually... Like I said, it gets really, really fucking weird at times. Especially with the mythical super being that can destroy all of existence as we know it. But, uh, but overall, it, it holds up pretty well. It is actually very clever. Um, and I, I do like how the movie is very self-aware of how cheap it is. There's a moment where the nerd wakes up after a nightmare where he's attacked by this painfully obvious puppet, <laughs> this alien creature type thing, and then wakes up and says, ugh, even my dreams are low budget. <laughs> it's like a, a lot of very clever moments like that. Uh, there's anything I can complain about in this movie... Uh, in the third act, it does kind of drag a little bit. Um, not so much that it really brings the movie down. I was still plenty entertained, just not as much as the rest of the movie leading up to that. Um, there's even a point where the, the nerd ends up getting separated from his sidekicks, uh, Cooper and Mandy, and it seems almost like the two of them are just kind of waiting around for the plot to catch back up to them so they can actually do stuff again. Uh, was kind of weird. They just kind of got moved off to the background, and that was it. Um, also, there's a... Towards the end, when everything goes to hell, because it has to when you have the military and an alien and a giant mythical super being that can destroy all of existence as we know it, uh, there's a point where uh, Sergeant McButter, uh, the general second in command, and Mandy get involved in a... what Mandy actually describes as a sexy catfight that really isn't a very apt description, first of all. There's... I don't know if there was anything particularly sexy about it. I mean, the ladies were hot enough, but... Uh, but, but the way the fight itself was done, it just... Uh, nothing about it looked particularly sexy, at least from what little I saw of it, and that was probably the big problem with this fight. They keep cutting back and forth between, you know, all the various things going on while this fight is taking place, but every time they cut back to this, 
sexy cat fight, they will show like one move, just one punch or one kick or something, and then immediately cut away to something else. So I think this, the fight is stretched out over maybe 10 minutes of the movie's runtime, but you only see about 15 seconds of it. And, and those 15 seconds look fine. So, but just based on that, I don't think it was any necessarily a physical limitation on the part of either actress, probably more so just either time or maybe a budgetary issue or the set being too small to do much more than that. Maybe a combination of all those issues. Uh, but yeah, little disappointing there. Um, bit of a deus ex machina at the end as well. And also, of course, the, the movie ends on a happy note. So of course, General Dark Onward is defeated. The way he goes out, I'm kind of torn on this because it almost seems like kind of a cop-out. But on the other hand, the way they had built this character up and the, the type of character he was... I guess he almost had to go out that way. There really was no other way it could have happened. So that's pretty much the film in a nutshell. In the end, I thought it was incredibly entertaining. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, I think fans of the Angry Video Game Nerd will definitely get a kick out of it. Uh, if you're not too familiar with his work, I would recommend making yourself familiar, first of all. Uh, watch some of his uh, game reviews and see if his style of humor is something that you would enjoy. Because uh, the movie is very much him. It is very James, and his passion for video games and for filmmaking as well really shines through cheap effects and all. And he and the rest of the people involved in making this film clearly had a fun time with it, and, and it shows. The movie, it doesn't have a lot of money behind it, but it definitely has a lot of heart. Uh, and yeah, if you want to watch this movie, it is currently available only on Vimeo. Uh, $4.99 for rental, $9.99 for purchase. I'll stick a link in the description. Uh, I, I just got it as a rental because I do plan on purchasing it as a Blu-ray when that finally comes out, which I think they're aiming for a couple months from now for that. But uh, in the meantime, you have the digital release to tide you over if you can't wait that long. So... Yeah, again, if you're a fan of The Nerd, definitely recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. And that's about it, so take care. Oh, <laughs>